Okay. This cute little Kikajou was delivered from Florida. Oh, yo, what a cutie. Oh, yeah, boy, snot up that booger. Oh, yeah, booger up the lens. That's it. You do it. Look at the scar tissue on the end of the nose. Okay. This girl was actually uh, traumatized by another female in the same situation. Oh, wow, that is awesome. If you guys will notice, see right there on the tip of the nose when we're breathing? That's something it's going in. That means that piece of bone is probably missing inside there. Anyway, it turns out that after her nose was crushed by a female kikajou in the same cage, this one ended up going through some, uh, some trauma and some repair, tons of antibiotics and tons of anti-inflammatories and so forth. Anyway, it turns out that she's had a hard time breathing. Uh, so they brought her to us to see if we can find something to do. If you'll, I am uh, one of the few people who actually have a, a rhinoscope small enough to get in there with some operating stuff. So I get the credit for trying to fix this. Um, and uh, anyway, so that's what we're looking at as of now. That uh, I am learning stuff as we speak. Very cool. Nom, 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 nom. Get that apple. You said apple who's boss. She's actually a very sweet creature. Um, comes out and lets you scratch her head. Her love's attention. Her's cute. Her's really cute. Yeah. Let's see you breathing funny. Yeah. Let's see you breathing funny. Yeah. So tomorrow we'll do some x-rays while she's under anesthesia. We'll get an idea of what's going on. And hopefully we can uh, improve this girl's quality of life. And let her smell the roses <laughs> or the apples or whatever else is going on. All right, later. <laughs> Look up here. What you notice is that spot right there in front of the nose. So that spot is moving. All right, that tells us that the bridge of the nose, the piece of bone that goes over that in cartilage, is broken. So that's already part of the damage that we're seeing in this guy. Um, I'm hoping that's all there is. But interesting, how to fix that? Okay, we'll know more a little bit later. Hey, pretty girl. Come here. Come on. Can I scratch your head? Oh, yeah. No? You know? What's up? Be very quiet. This is a sleeping kinkajou. Who has sleep apnea? She's just trying to breathe. No air is passing. This is gonna go on for a minute. You're pushing harder. There's some air coming through. There we go. We're gonna open our mouth. Okay, this case has been 
<laughs> a nightmare case. But I love her because she's cool. Here's our little girl. We could, her nares were so small that we really could not get a 1.8 millimeter rigid endoscope in there. And that is the smallest scope I think they make. Unless you're a snail. They have a whole special endoscope outfit they use for snails. And we just can't buy those. Because human money and snail money are two different things. Anyway. Um, wow. Uh, X-ray showed that this part of her nose here, the bone, was actually broke where she was bit across here. So this part of the cartilage was separated from that part of the bone. Um, Dad had told me, since uh, he lives in, pa in Pensacola or somewhere in Florida, that he didn't want to make the trip any sooner than he had to. So if there was a chance that we could do this surgery today, we would go ahead and do it. So she was doing fine under anesthesia, not having any problems. And next thing you know, so we go ahead, we clip her up, we schedule her first, get her in there for surgery. Um, Basically went and put a hole in the rostral bone, and then from there, took it under the sinus cavity, into the sinus cavity, to the end of the cartilage bone, under the skin, tied the knot under the skin, and then sutured the skin back over the top of it. So as you can see now, it doesn't move, and it doesn't have a hole in it. That's the good news. The bad news is, as soon as we were done with anesthesia, this girl basically went into anaphylactic shock and was having some anesthesia reactions. So at that point in time, we started treating her for that, and ended up having to give her some... Uh, intracardiac injections and the uh, bad news about sometimes doing uh, CPR and getting to that point is these these injections can actually puncture a lung. So while we're trying to save her from her uh, her anaphylactic shock then her uh, her pneumothorax started making life a little bit more difficult. Finally figured out what that's what that was and pulling air off her chest ever since. She's a lot more stable now. This is basically about four hours later and uh, as you can tell right there on the side of her chest where she's been uh, poked and, and aspirated a few times. So this girl has been road hard and put up wet. Um, we've also found out in her x-rays that she is much older than she was thought. She actually has some dyspongolosis. If you notice in her ears, on the side of her mouth, she's got those little old age liver spots that we often see in mammals, even on the bottom of her feet. Those are just not young whippersnapper feet. And she was thought to be wild caught, and uh, there's nothing about this girl that's wild caught. She didn't try to bite my gloves, didn't have any problems. So anyway, this whole case has just been a strange case. But uh, I, uh, I'm going to go ahead and take her home myself and monitor her throughout the evening. And this is what she looks like when she's relaxed and breathing better. All right, that's it for now. I get to babysit. Woo woo! All right, we made it home. We're at the Ask You Humble Abode. And it is humble. <laughs> there she is, she's breathing okay. You can see her moving. There you go. My cat has decided that he's gonna help take care of her as well. You can hear the monkey bounce around in the background. So anyway, she's resting pretty good at this point in time. She's a little bit more alert. She actually uh, raised her head and looked at me. Um, she's just been through a lot today. All right, she's gonna have some good rest. She has a little a Kinkajou fort built for a queen, including its own built-in heater, and she even has a GoPro watching her. Oh, who else could make this happen? All right, she's resting. No news is good news through the night. Here we are, more than five hours after surgery. And we're breathing a whole lot better. You know, if you pull your tongue out, you can breathe better. Yeah, right there. Oh, I know. It's okay. 
eso. Is so much better though. All right, so far, so good. It's almost 10 o'clock. She can, uh, she's panning. We just, uh, put the temperature down on the inside by removing the, uh, the heat pad. <coughs> she's, um, moving, a little jumpy. When you make some high-pitched noises, her ears tend to move in that direction. Uh, she's now, she has only raised her head once or twice after surgery. Um, she is getting a little restless in there. But, uh, she's got a long way to go. All right. And X is like, cool. What's this, Dad? I hope she works. I hope she's fine. Okay. If those of you who watched these before, you know that whenever I'm doing these comments, it usually means that it didn't fare well. The bad news is, she did pass away sometime after 5 in the morning. Um, I had been checking her every hour to every other hour, depending on noises and cats and any noise that happened in the apartment. I'd wake up and go check on her. She pretty much was the same throughout the night. She only raised her head maybe once or twice after, uh, maybe three times at most after uh, after surgery. Um, usually stressing out over breathing or something of that matter. Anyway, I, uh, I want to thank my staff, my surgical staff. It, uh, without their constant monitoring, without their care, without their attention to detail, there's would have been no chance of her actually getting off the table or having a chance to come home with me. Not that that's a major plus, but it does show that uh, that they work hard and they've been taught well, and I'm always proud of them. I'd also like to thank the client for coming in several states over and trusting us with a case like this. Um, in South America, these aren't rare creatures, but here in North America, you know, in the United States, they are kind of rare and they are exotic and they are unique. Um, and I love working with the multitude of species that I had entrusted with. Any failure in those cases are is always something that I take rather personally. So again, I want to thank everybody involved. Um, the bad news in this case basically has to do with the fact that uh, there was a lot of misinformation, and it didn't make her uh, her end of life any better. Had I known she was older, we probably would have done a better screening process. Um, we probably would have put off the second second half of the surgery for another time. Had I known she was so arthritic, you know, I probably again would have waited a little bit longer just to make sure she was more stable, you know, had gained some weight, uh, done some other things. But the bottom line is, it was the anesthetic, um, her anesthetic death that had caused the hypoxia, hypoxemia, and that probably caused some brain damage. Um, Again, my staff got her back. We could make the body work, and the body was doing fine. Unfortunately, we just could not make the mind come back to us and snap back to its normal self. Uh, even the hydrothorax, I mean, uh, pneumothorax in itself is something that you can't predict. 
but if you recognize it right away, it makes a big difference. And the good news is I think we recognized all those things almost in time. But coupled with the fact that she'd also been a patient who had had uh, um, sleep apnea or, you know, was already used to hypoxic conditions for, for several months now, it didn't make us recognize those, recognizing those clinical signs any quicker or easier. But anyway, I, uh, I'm sorry, little girl. We did our best. It was a neat, it was a unique procedure. It would have been one for the books. Hopefully someone will watch this who has a kinkajou and has a similar problem um, or any procyanid or any other mammal for that matter and uses the knowledge that we gain from her. If that works, then it wasn't, it wasn't a futile effort. And the good news is she died while we were trying. She was a cute creature. I will miss her. All right. Enjoy the rats.